Well, I heard a zombie. Um, and I thought that I lit things up well enough, but uh, to my surprise, I seem to have found uh, this one here. I was thinking about uh, possibly keeping <laughs> keeping them <laughs> as a uh, just an operator for this uh, clock tower. The only thing is, it seems to get hurt each time uh, the cart passes through here, and uh, well, we don't want to get any liability claims for uh, workers not being treated fairly, so we'll have to kill them. Yeah, this, this, this will not, this, this too shall pass, sadly, but we can still enjoy it in the meantime. So... I'm guessing you all want a big reveal of all the work I did. Well, all right, here goes. And a uh, nice dramatic walk. Here it is. I've done it. I went. And I did all of it. This took... A good amount of work. Um, actually, <laughs> I want to show this. A few casualties were um, uh, Boris and Doris here. My, uh, I didn't actually name them, <laughs> but they're my uh, Efficiency 5, Silk Touch, and Fortune. Uh, they will be sadly missed, but through their bravery, and they literally ran out like right at the end, was able to do all this. So I'll give you a few views here, obviously. In the middle, which is where the, uh, I guess the, the platform will be. And at the bottom, where hopefully no one should ever go, unless they want to be stupid. Like, you know, I, 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 do, I do that sometimes. And here we are at the very top of the uh, Inside Out Death Star looking shape. So this was a big step, a very big step, uh, very time consuming, but I elected to do it. So I don't think anyone's ready to really throw me a pity party for something I volunteered to do. And really, I'm pretty over it, but you know, sometimes you, you bite off a big chunk of work and you're like, wow, that was a big chunk of work. But then you realize, you know what? It's fine. It's done now. It's good. It wasn't that bad. And as I said before, it probably didn't have to be this big. But then again, it didn't have to be this awesome either. But it is not done yet. It needs that coat of paint that uh, is going to make it not look like just a bunch of earth. Earth stuff. Earth. And I have a little bit of it here. Not there, though. Or there. Where? Here. I've been making uh, quart quartz blocks out of the uh, all the quartz we were mining before. And actually, in this old house, I was collecting, I don't seem to be collecting it here anymore, all of the quartz that I was uh, mining to do enchantments. Oh yeah, I put them up here. And I took a bunch of it out. Yeah, all that. These were all full. And started making blocks out of them. I'm going to make blocks out of the rest of those. And use those to create the sort of paneling effect of... Uh, of the Cerebro-esque room down there. Before I had this uh, storage facility down here, I had actually another setup down one of these tunnels. I have to remember which one. Oh yeah, this place. <laughs> uh, this is bringing me back. I decided to mine too close to the bedrock up there and I didn't hit a single piece of quartz, so I went down and uh, had these. But I still... I tried to, bra to branch mine, essentially, high enough up so that uh, there wouldn't be as many drop-offs. So uh, this is like 112. I think at 118, it literally doesn't get made anymore, like any ores. But I actually found more success just walking around on the surface. And uh, this actually leads to my... Uh, the, the original portal that came in here is just, just down there. But I kind of walked around here. I haven't harvested this stuff yet just because I thought it kind of looked nice, actually. And I spent a lot of time 
getting uh, quartz, and I literally put down, I can see a little bit of it over there, but a torch is pointing the way back, just everywhere. I kind of walked around, and uh, I guess I didn't walk that way, because I don't see... Yeah, there's a, there's one right there. If I uh, if I do this, you can kind of see it. But this is how I got a bunch of quartz, and that's how I was originally getting my levels for uh, enchantments and stuff before the before the mob farm happened. But I thought I would explain all that, why I have the quartz, and uh, now that I have a bunch of it, I actually have a use for it. All right, just got back with some uh, supplies, uh, plenty of quartz going on here and a fresh pick just uh efficiency uh two though nothing nothing too crazy i've climbed up this thing and i think that this isn't going to be really that fancy or finessed it's mostly just replacing the uh the blocks that are showing and uh it's probably going to be one at a time and nothing uh, too special. Like, it'll probably just be a lot of this. I might even, I might even do uh, a couple at a time like this. Oh. And actually, if this supply gets low, I might be able to stretch these by making them half slabs. So the top's pretty straightforward. Um, just going around putting the in the blocks. It does look like the. Uh, the half slabs are going to have to be utilized because there's just like so much in here. At least for the parts that uh, aren't going to be showing. Like if it's, a f if it's a flush ceiling, then I can get away with having half slabs on the bottom. But for the walls, they have to be the full block. I wanted to show the bottom though because I want to make this thing spawn proof and it's all going to be dark. Like you can see up there where there's less torch light, the actual color that this place will have. So it'll be more uh, kind of like this, more of a gray color, like a dark gray, light, dark light gray. Does this make any sense? Does it make any sense at all? But I also wanted to be spawn proof, even though it's going to be really dark. So uh, the best thing I can do is put half slabs in, I think. So what I'm probably going to do is I can either put them on top of the ground or one underneath. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do one underneath. And the reason is when you're up there, I think you'll notice if it's just a little bit higher, but you won't notice if it's a little bit lower. So basically, every block here is going to be re replaced like this. So like that. And if it's on the sides, then it's probably gonna have to be let's see I get away with a half there and then a half there so something like something like that and this should all be uh, spawn proof so that's gonna take a little while and I think I'm just gonna be gone say you know uh, it's been fun I'm gonna you know disappear for a little bit and when I come back it should all be done so just one big huge status update when this is all well three hours later and three double chests of uh, this stuff uh, what is that, cord tissue paper whatever and I've only gotten like the, the speck on the ceiling I mean, a kind of nice ring around the side, and uh, the bottom part's down there, but this is turning into a thing where I ran out of resources, and this is, you know, I, I think that my, my eyes were bigger than, I was going to say bigger than my stomach, but that doesn't make sense. Bigger than my head? No, that doesn't make sense either. Uh, this is, I didn't think this was going to be this big of a project. So this might turn into a longer running thing. And since I basically am out of material for this episode, and I think this is way too short, I'm going to have to figure out something else. Wait, I know. This requires my thinking chair.
I forget which one of these peaks. I hope it wasn't that one. It's my thinking chair. I think it might have been this one, actually. This is where I go to think about what this place would be like if I could see further. Someday, right? Someday. I keep in, keeping my, uh, my fingers crossed. It's an old euphemism for meaning you're hoping, but also for lying. So I, uh... So by this point in the series, I've built a lot of things. And one of the goals of this series was to build random things and reference things like games or whatever that I, I enjoyed in the past. Build them, but not build them randomly, because I think everyone kind of does that. I wanted to differentiate myself by giving a reason for them all existing in one location. So, like, I have the clock tower from Majora's Mask, uh, one of the t uh, portals from the Twilight Princess, there's a castle over there, and there's a Cerebro being built underneath the whole town. This And, like, this kind of isolationist village kind of rustic thing and now I just have to make them all work together oh yeah and there's a sky portal base and there's gonna be a I haven't started really on it yet but there's a whole portal room down there that's gonna be uh, very uh, Kingdom Hearts E-esque or Ugh. but like I said I could be satisfied with just building random things and being oh, look at all the things I've made yay but that's one of the reasons why I think I kind of lose interest in the game or I've seen people get get lost of interest get get loss of interest that's the you build a lot of random things you're like cool now I've made them and now I'm bored well no that's a really good opportunity to like figure out why what they all are doing there like why are these here if they actually like make the land plausible so one of the fun things I like to do is make out a rough timeline of when things would be added to the city like I think that it's safe to say that the current moment being existed did, did is now or, or modern time of this area this modern area's times is the modern times era so this town should be active that's the modern component then i would look at things that would have gone on within the last like 100 years so that's where like the the map makers or the what the recent history of the uh, the townspeople Anything that happened that people would still remember, those things would fall in that area. And then from 100 years to about like 500 years could be stuff like um, the castle and the clock tower. Those could have come into existence. Or it doesn't have to be 500. It could be like 1,000 years. It just depends on how old you want to go. But I say 1,000 years because it's not really like ancient, ancient history. Like I also like to have things that are like super old like older than you could like way super old and that's where like the other weird technologies come in like i i actually thoroughly enjoy um when a really old technology is way more advanced than any of the current ones because usually current people are like hey look at me i'm the i'm the king of the uh <laughs> evolutionary ladder i'm on top of it obviously i'm the best but they look back and say hey look this uh this population from like 3,000 years ago had like the cure for every disease and the winning lottery numbers. So they had like everything. So I'm toying around with uh, basically the castle is like the 1,000 year time span. The village is like the 100 year time span. Oh yeah, the clock tower is also a part of the castle. But the, uh, the Cerebro building, the big sphere, that could either be like way back in ancient times but somehow it's like technologically way more advanced than like everything else that's happening which I'm really partial toward or it like it's brand new like it just shooped right in there and it belongs to like uh, or like the, it's like a monitoring thing for like a advanced, even more advanced civilization that these people don't know about so in the last few minutes you may have noticed that I haven't built anything at all so you could argue that, oh, we're not really playing Minecraft anymore. We're just sitting and talking. I would have to correct you and say that we are sitting and talking and planning. And as they say, if you don't plan, then you plan don't. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah. But I really think talking about what you're building and why is that little uh, spice that adds more to the food 
than you would think in this metaphor. And over my years of playing this game, I've come to realize that it is vital. Otherwise, you're just running around doing whatever, and like, who cares? Like, even you start to say who cares, and that's not good, because why would you keep doing something you're not caring about? And I definitely, definitely want to care about what I'm doing here. So I'm going to plan to care. And if you plan to care, if you care to plan, you plan to care. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Nope, I just bit my tongue. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to think about that. I'm going to think about what all these things, what their connecting story is going to be. Because I'd like to have one, and I think it'd be cool. And I'm going to do that all as I build and finish building, hopefully, Cerebro. These are kind of strange things I'm trying to tie together. So the story might get a little crazy. But as they say, if you don't crazy to plan, you... But I guess I'm not really too worried about that. And I also probably shouldn't film during a sunrise or a sunset because it's really easy to tell if I'm making cuts or not. So anyways, that's it. That's the end of the episode. This has been mostly just a big progress update. Um, but that's okay. I'll just keep making progress. And eventually, something will be finished. Something, somewhere, somehow, some way. But until then, or at least until the next episode, this has been Red McNitt. This has been The Saga, and you're welcome to join me in the next episode.